Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and it is time for my top five predictions for what is coming in the e-bike industry in the new year. Now 2024, that marks I think 15 years since the first time I put an electric motor on a bike and called it an e-bike. So I've been fortunate enough to be around the e-bike industry since near its infancy and get a pretty good sense of how the industry is moving. Now like each year at the end of this video, I'm going to include my predictions from last year so we can keep me honest and see how right or wrong I was. Also at the end of this video, I'm going to be giving away a free e-bike. That's right, someone watching this video right now, could be you, is going to win the electric XP Lite. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see how that could be you. Now, my first prediction is that we're gonna see more of a push into the lower, more budget end of the e-bike spectrum, but especially from the more bike shop brands, companies like Trek, Specialized, Cannondale, Giant, these kinds of companies are gonna continue pushing harder into this budget space. Now, this is more of a US prediction because in Europe, a lot of the uh, major bike brands are sticking with their higher cost, higher quality bikes because in general, Europe seems to value higher quality bikes over lower prices, call them crazy. But in the US, there is still a huge emphasis on low cost affordable bikes. And because the last year in 2023 saw such a crunch on the market, a lot of those higher priced bikes were really either squeezed out or, or hit hard. So I think a lot of these bike shop brands that are used to producing these higher quality, higher dollar bikes are gonna be pushing more in towards that budget space. Now they're not gonna be making junk, of course, and some of them are probably gonna to continue to use this like sub brand naming so that they don't dilute their own high quality name. But I think we are gonna see them push towards lower cost, more attractive bikes to a general audience, as opposed to sticking with that sort of bike shop customer that is really now a minority in the e-bike space. Now, my second prediction is that we're gonna see some crazy sales and really great prices into the beginning and even through the middle of the year and into the riding season. And part of that is because of that huge e-bike crunch that we saw at the end of last year and really throughout 2023 that the market just was not doing very well for e-bikes. You know, there were a lot of overstock situations, a lot of companies had shelves full and were doing huge sales going into uh, Black Friday. Those sales continued, you know, they weren't just Black Friday. They went through the holiday season, after Christmas, companies were like, you know what, we're gonna keep pushing these uh, holiday sales through into January, and here we are. So I think that if you've been looking for an e-bike, it is going to be a great time to buy in early 2024, just because there are so many companies that are still hurting, they've got a lot of stock, and they're really trying to get it out there and really sell a lot of the uh, shelf space that they have. Next, I think that we're unfortunately going to see a number of bankruptcies or just general closing down, winding down of a lot of e-bike brands. Again, I mean, a lot of this is coming off of this tough financial situation for e-bike companies in 2023. We already saw a few big name closures. Of course, there was Van Moof in uh, the Netherlands. That was one of these big high-tech e-bike companies that closed down, went through bankruptcy. We've seen some companies fall apart in the US. Uh, in the past year, I think Zugo fell apart. Uh, Saunders had a fiery tailspin of a story. And I think this is really going to not only continue into 2024, but I think it's going to grow. Unfortunately, there are a lot of companies that just don't have the capital to keep floating for so long. And the sense that I get is that there are several that are sort of teetering on the edge right now. So unfortunately, I think we're gonna see a lot of these smaller companies start to fall out. We're gonna see more of these bankruptcies, more of these receiverships, that sort of thing. Now that doesn't mean that your bike is gonna be unsupported. You know, a lot of the major players I think are still gonna be okay but there are so many small brands out there right now. There must be a hundred or more e-bike brands across the US. So I think a lot of these smaller brands that are already hurting just aren't gonna make it through 2024. It could be that you know in the summer of 2024, suddenly the market really picks up and a lot of these companies are saved. But at least early through the year, I just don't see any huge improvement in the market. And these companies that are hurting are gonna keep hurting even worse. Next, unfortunately, this is another sort of negative prediction, but I don't think we're gonna see any ground groundbreaking announcements on the e-bike space outside of maybe a few healthy companies. Most of these companies, because they're still hurting, they're really focused on trying to um, maintain their position right now, not lose market share, and get a lot of the bikes that are sitting in their warehouses out so they can keep the cash flow coming. They're not focused on the next big thing, the next major innovation, that sort of thing, like we saw really coming out of 2022 and even early into 2023. 
So don't expect anything groundbreaking outside of maybe a couple of the top companies that seem to be in a good position. And lastly, and I think this is a positive prediction, I don't think we're gonna see any major crackdowns in terms of regulation on e-bikes in the US, at least not in 2024. A lot of people are saying this is the year that the Consumer Product Safety Commission comes in and starts you know, heavy-handedly laying down a bunch of e-bike regulations, or this is the year that they get classified as motor vehicles, or this is the year that regulation comes. And I don't agree with those predictions. I, part of it is just, I don't think that these things move quickly enough. I think that eventually, sure, the CPSC is probably going to come in and say, we've got to rein in some of these uh, faster out of class e-bikes, that sort of thing. I even support that because I think that, you know, we need a good regulatory structure to keep these things safe and to keep people safe. But I don't think that 2024 is going to be the big crackdown year outside of perhaps increased regulation on battery safety in terms of fire safety. We've already seen that a lot. Um, I think that was one of my predictions from last year we're gonna go through as well. So, you know, on the UL testing side or on other certification side, I think we'll continue to see increased regulation. But in terms of general e-bike regulation, cracking down, speeds, power levels, that sort of thing, I just don't see anything coming out in 2024. It just seems like that's too close and that kind of um, bigger, more over-encompassing regulation is further out on the horizon. Now let's check out my predictions from last year and see how well I did. First off, I think we're gonna see a lot more importance placed on safety certifications, things like UL listed batteries, that sort of thing. All right, this one definitely came true. I mean, there were full companies that went total UL compliance, Rad Power Bikes came out and said, from now on, everything that we make is gonna have a UL battery. Other companies are almost entirely UL compliant. Unfortunately, I think that we're putting too much of a, an importance on uh, just UL compliance. There are other safety certifications out there. UL also has a for-profit side, which is, you know, they have their nonprofit that says these are the safety certifications, and they have their for-profit side that says, write us a big check and we'll certify you to these. So there's, um, you know, a bit of an issue there, a bit self-serving. I think that we should look into some of these other European safety regulations as well. But uh, I definitely think that, you know, 2023 was a big crackdown on fire safety in terms of batteries. Next, I think we're gonna see a lot more of these e-bike uh, tax credits, incentives, rebates, that sort of thing. Basically programs that are created to help make electric bicycles more affordable. Yeah, this one was definitely true. 2023 was full of e-bike incentives. If you check Micro Mobility's incentive tracker, they've got over a hundred uh, different incentives from local to state level uh, programs that are, you know, tax credits, um, point of sale rebates, uh, that sort of thing. And you know, all, not all of these are currently active. If you scroll through that list, there, you know, some of them are open for a period of time. But all over the country, there, are, you know, just tons and tons of these e-bike uh, rebates, incentive programs, tax credits, all sorts of things. So I think that is great, uh, and I'm really glad to see that happen. And I hope it continues. I think we're going to see more low-cost yet actually pretty good quality e-bikes. Yeah, this one I think was pretty accurate as well. If you look at the lower end of the market, we're just not seeing that many sort of garbage e-bikes anymore. Those kinds that you know you get on. Amazon, they'd fall apart in like a month. Certainly they still exist, but they're not as, as big of a player anymore. And if you look at the sort of um, decent quality entry level starting at, you know, like eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars, especially companies like Electric, uh, electric e-bikes out of Phoenix, you know, they've really upped their game. So these entry level, lower quality bikes are now pretty good quality. You know, the electric XP 3.0 that was released last year, I mean, that thing is awesome. Integrated rack, hydraulic brakes, powerful uh, current based pedal assist, all sorts of great features that we're not used to seeing at this low entry price. And so I'm really glad to see that the entry level for e-bikes in the market have upped their game and the quality is really improving. Next, I think we're gonna see even more of the cargo and utility bikes, as well as e-trikes, electric tricycles. Now, to be honest, I thought this category would really blow up bigger than it did. We, we did see some really interesting rollouts. The electric expedition cargo bike, I think was my favorite of the year. Uh, that's on the lower end of the, the price range. In the middle, there were some other interesting models like the Velotric Go, uh, the Velotric Packer was another great one. Sliding up even higher, Specialized had their um, Globe Haul line, which had short tail and, and long tail cargo bikes. And so we certainly saw some interesting ones. On the trike side, there wasn't that much after the XP trike came out. Um, I tested a Virobus, which was a really great, super cheap trike. It's like $780 or something. You know, the quality is not amazing, but again, for that price, like, how can you beat it? but I really thought we'd see more in that market and perhaps it was just the general slowdown of 2023 that limited that expansion, unfortunately. So that one, I don't think I was too close on. 
And lastly, my fifth prediction is that I think we're gonna see more e-bikes from non-e-bike companies. Specifically, a lot of car companies are starting to get into e-bikes, and I think this is really gonna become a thing in 2023. And this one, my last prediction, was probably my biggest miss out of all of them. Uh, I really thought there were gonna be more of these partnerships, especially coming off of um, big rollouts like that Hummer e-bike, that sort of thing. But again, just because 2023 was such a tough year for the e-bike market, I think perhaps that limited these types of brand partnerships coming from automotive companies and that sort of thing. Who knows, maybe 2024 we'll see more of that. Maybe we'll get a Chevy e-bike. All right, now like I promised, it is time to give away an e-bike. This week I am giving away the Electric XP Lite. This is an awesome e-bike at $800. It is crazy affordable, but it's still a really good model. You know, you give up a few things, you give up that suspension, you give up a seven speed shifter, but what you get is a nice, lightweight, powerful e-bike. The thing still does 20 miles an hour. It is super convenient, fold it up, carry it around, super lightweight. I think it's something like uh, 40, 42 pounds, something like that. And it is an awesome ride for anyone who wants an e-bike to get around, but doesn't want something that's gonna be so heavy or bulky or really get in the way. It's something that you can fold up, stick under your desk at work, and it almost isn't there anymore. At 800 bucks, I don't know how anyone could beat this thing. So this is an awesome e-bike. I think it is gonna be great for someone. Now, how is this giveaway going to work? It is part of e-bikes for good, a program I started to find people who need an e-bike to improve their life somehow, but can't afford one, and I wanna get them e-bikes. So if that sounds like you, if an e-bike could help you in any way, maybe you're down on your luck, you lost your job, you're down in your health and you need an e-bike to get back into fitness, that sort of thing, but an e-bike is just outside of your financial reach, it's just out of your budget, let me know. I want you to go to ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood. The URL is down here somewhere. There's a uh, entry form there. It's completely free. There's gonna be no marketing. You're not gonna get you know, signed up for anything. Just tell me your story, fill out that form. And at the end of my next video, I'm going to do a drawing among the uh, deserving entrants. So it'll be a random drawing and one person will win that electric XP light. So if it sounds like something that could help you out and improve your life, let me know, ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood. Fill out the form and I wanna match you with that e-bike. Now it's time to announce the winner of the e-bike from my last video though. And the randomly selected winner is... Ashley H. So congratulations, I'm really glad to be getting this e-bike out to you. And if you wanna win Electric XP Lite and be at the end of my next video as the winner, make sure you fill out that form. And last but not least, before I go, it is time to announce the winner of the book giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Jarmel Barnett. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you would like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you gotta do is put a comment down below this video, say whatever you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And anyone who doesn't wanna wait that long to hopefully win a copy of one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. Thanks for your support, everybody. I'll see you here next time.